One of the most common questions I get these days is how I move my clients through a two-week process and keep them on track without the due dates, deadlines, timeframes, all of that stuff affecting other projects that are scheduled after that one. So basically, how do I stay on track all year long? Today, I'm actually going to share that whole process from start to finish with you and break it down. But before I dive into that, if we haven't met before, my name is Caitlin. I am now a coffee slash chai nerd and it is fall. So it's time to put on my hoodie and not break out the pumpkin spice latte, but break out my chai tea. (laughs) Also, I am a Squarespace web designer and educator and I've been doing this thing for like 10 years now. I've been a designer since 2006 by trade, and I've got lots of tips to share, including my trial and error. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. Let's dive in. So to get any new clients, you need a lead capture form or an inquiry form. I use Dubsado for this. That's my CRM, but you can actually use HoneyBook, Bonsai, even Squarespace forms for this, or something that I've recently come across, Tally. If you need something that has conditional logic, which is an excellent thing to have when you're first getting started, if you don't need the autoresponders or the automations, the workflows, all the things that come with softwares like Bonsai, HoneyBook, and Dubsado, something like Tally that has conditional logic built in will help you offer them a form that can ask them strategic questions questions about your services without having to answer questions that are not relevant to whatever they're asking about. (laughs) So that's your lead inquiry form. From there, they will book, in theory, a discovery call. That's a free consult with you. Essentially, the purpose of that is to get face-to-face on a camera or a phone call or in person if you're nearby and talk about the project details together so you can figure out whether or not you are a fit for each other. This is a judgment call that I make on them as much as it is for them to make on me. (laughs) So basically, we are judging each other on whether or not we'd be a good fit and want to work together. It's really easy to do. I have a whole separate video on forms and on discovery calls. And if you want to learn more about that, go check out that video before you move forward, because that's a pretty important piece of the puzzle to get that locked down before you move into the next stages of the project. After that call, if they've said that they want to work with me and they want to move forward, I will send them a packet of information, which includes the invoice and the contract and all that stuff as agreed. So whatever price I gave them on the discovery call is usually the same price that I put in the proposal or the invoice or whatever. You can technically skip the proposal. I don't, but I'm not really sure why I don't. (laughs) It is redundant information, but since Dubsado fills it out for me, it's not like it's an actual extra step for me. Now, let's talk about how to actually schedule your projects. When you're on a discovery call with someone and you and they say, like, when's your next availability? It's a good idea for you to actually know the answer to that. And the worst way to give somebody your availability is to pull up your personal calendar and go, mm, looks like I could probably fit you in on... Tuesday. No, I have a haircut. Um, Let's see. I think maybe next week. Oh, no, my mother-in-law is coming to town and I have dinner with my husband for our anniversary. So, okay, I guess it's more like that's wrong. Don't do it that way. (laughs) I have a freebie actually that is a ClickUp template, but you can apply it in Asana or Notion or whatever. You can recreate it in any platform, basically. It's just a a calendar view of information so that you can list all of the projects you'd like to take on that year, the value for all of those projects, and see those dates on a calendar so you can give them public view access to that calendar so they can see your spots for the year and pick one that makes sense for them. That eliminates the back and forth and you don't have to give them access to like your Google Calendar, your Apple Calendar, whatever you personally use. So once they've chosen the dates and they've done all the paperwork after that, the contract and all of that, then it's time to give them access to their homework. Now, before I move into the homework stage, I just want to let you know that I never take on a project in less than two to four weeks from the time we are on the call because they actually need that time to get their shit together first. My portal is very detailed and it's very educational, so it's going to guide them through creating the content and establishing what the content's supposed to be before the project begins, and they're going to need that time to figure that out and finish all the guides. So when the project starts the week before, 
I'm checking in with them, seeing how they're doing, if they've completed all their homework. I'm also ordering a gift a lot of the time, not all of the time. I do it in different stages depending on the client. <laughs> but a lot of the time I like to send a surprise gift to the client and usually it's catered to their personality or something that they particularly told me that they like. Luckily for me, my business is based on working with personality-focused work. That is a really easy thing for me to do. I love to use something like Knack Shops for this. Box Fox is another good one. There's a lot of client gifting sites out there. So I send them a gift, which they are not expecting. And then the week before the project, I'm reviewing their homework. I'm making a list of questions based on the stuff that they submitted and on the kickoff call on the first Monday of the project, I'm going through that list with them and asking them all those questions. So if I need clarity on anything, if, if something needs to be confronted, like if they told me they don't need a blog, but that's how they're planning on marketing or something. And that call is recorded because I want to be able to refer back to it myself while I'm designing later so I can just hear what they said about a particular thing if I need to. It's also offered to them as a replay. And of course, it's just recorded for legal purposes just to cover my ass in case I ever need it. Just as a side note, when I build a site in Squarespace, I do start the website on my own account because Squarespace Circle members get access to a six month trial. And when I start it on my account, I can pass along a discount to them so that when they buy their first plan, it's 20% off. So there's some perks to that. I always start it in my account. That also gives me control over when to hand off the website based on when the client has finished payments. That's really important as a solo business person <laughs> who cannot just afford to lose thousands of dollars when someone doesn't pay for the services that were rendered. If you build the site on your own account, there will be some movement of Squarespace subscriptions and domains that need to happen, but I'll have to tackle that in a different video. It's not super hard. If you need more information, leave a comment below and I'll do a separate video on that topic. After that call, it lasts 60 to 90 minutes, I dive into creating the template style guide for the website and notice I skip the mood board altogether because I use the template style guide kind of for that. And I have a video on that, I believe, over here. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check that out too. <laughs> I also just jump into the homepage first. I don't do wireframes or mockups because I feel like Squarespace is so easy to use. It actually feels like redundant work for me personally to have to design it in this external program and then put it into Squarespace when the two settings are completely different. I know that there's ways around that, but just for me personally, it feels like redundant work that I don't want to do. So I don't do wireframes or mockups. I just jump into the homepage draft. By Wednesday, that first week, I'm ready to present the draft and see if I'm on the right track for the rest of the website. So I don't touch any of the other pages yet. I'm only focused on creating that homepage based on their content guide, the information they submitted to me in their homework. Clients have two options for the homepage draft presentation. I can pre-record it and show it to them and they can give me their feedback or we can hop on an impromptu call to go over it together. Live is gonna be my preference always just because it's easier to get real genuine feedback <laughs> and it's you don't have to read between the lines like they either you can tell they either like it or they don't right so everything is a little bit faster that way after that call I jump into the remaining pages and by Friday that first week I have a full website to present that Friday morning or afternoon, we'll hop on a presentation call Well, I will show them the entire website in that call. I will walk them through all the pages, show them all the effects, all the custom features, explain my design choices and why I think they will work, anything about the process they have an opportunity to ask questions about. Uh, so that's, that's the first week. It is kickoff, design draft for the homepage, and then the design rest of the pages by that Friday. So it's a pretty busy week. Now it doesn't take me nearly that long. I can do a 15 page website in a week, no problem. <laughs> Also, at the end of that design presentation call in the first week, I'm asking them about their domain because if they need to move or transfer their domain for any reason from wherever they purchased it to Squarespace, we need a little bit of time to get that done. So we'll have that conversation. If they're just connecting it, that's just a simple, hey, our website lives over here, but our domain lives over there <laughs> kind of situation, that's much faster to implement. And so we won't need the extra time for that, but we make that decision on the first Friday. 
The second Monday of the project is the start of the revision round period. And I know that I'm a little bit different, but I hate counting revision rounds. I do not like to do it. I do not want to do it. <laughs> so I have a process for that. And in this video, I talk about the tool that I use for getting revision round feedback from my clients for websites in particular. But basically, I have a software which shows them the draft of the website through Squarespace. It's not published yet, but it's interactive. They can click on things, they can scroll, they can see the animations, they can pin their feedback directly on the screen. And as long as that happens between Monday and Wednesday end of day, I don't care how many there are. <laughs> I've had anything from six or so questions or comments all, all the way up to about a hundred. It really depends on the client and the scope of the project. By that Wednesday end of day, I am starting to do other things while they are leaving me any revision feedback. So that's checking the responsiveness of the website. That's double checking all the links to make sure things work. If we have migrated the website, I am checking or adding URL redirects so that the old links won't be broken when we move to the new website. I'm also implementing some basic SEO that Wednesday and Thursday. It's all about launch prep, basically, while they're wrapping up their revision rounds. On that second Thursday, the launch prep specifically will include, if I haven't gotten to it at that point, checking all the website settings. That's going to the settings panel and checking everything, including the global email notification styles, the form packs, all of this stuff. Double checking all of the links, as I said, responsive design tweaks and basic SEO implementation. Because on the second Friday of the project, that's the end of the second week, we are launching the website in most cases. It's a somewhat rare occurrence where the client is not ready to launch at that point, they do have the option. I will not force them to go live on that second week if they are not ready. But if they are, I will help them pick a plan, move their domain if that's necessary, connect their domain if that's the option, buy a domain, <laughs> all of the steps to make the, the website live on the call right then. The launch call is technically recorded, but I don't push record until after the launch steps have been finished because I don't want a record of their credit card information and all of that stuff. So we go through adding the client as a contributor to the website. I then transfer the ownership to that contributor. So I become the admin by default and they become the website owner. They can buy the Squarespace plan. They connect the domain or transfer or buy the domain. They set the site to live in site availability. They cancel the old plan if they've migrated from an old Squarespace site. There's a system and process there. So moving on, we've done all the launch steps at this point, and now we're switching gears in the call. We're still in the same call. <laughs> And we're switching over to training. So now I'm talking about all of the launch steps that need to happen after the actual launch. So now the website is live. What do they need to do next in order to get traffic, right? And that's a really important piece. So before we move into how to use or edit the website, we're first going to go through like basic steps and getting Google to know that the new website exists. Then I start going into the training session where I show them how to swap out photos and edit text and where the page menu is and all of that kind of stuff, what it looks like in the analytics panel so they can see their progress. And if they have anything specific they want to learn, they can ask me and I will have that whole session recorded for the replay later. I also explain my private resub. <laughs> I also explain my private resources hub, which is a page on a secret page of their website that only they have access to. It's password protected and all of that, but it's a list of resources so that they can learn and feel empowered to maintain and edit their own website without me, because I don't know about you, but I don't have time to do a whole bunch of retainer work. As much as I might love to stay in touch with my clients, I just can't keep up with that kind of workload. <laughs> So then I ask them if they have any questions. I explain how the support period works. We get off the call. I do any last minute to do's and Dumpsado initiates the support period process that follows that last day of the project. So starting that day, the last day of the project, Dubsado will actually initiate their support period process, which is essentially all automated. <laughs> Thank you to Coley James, who set that up in Dubsado for me. She is a actual Dubsado genius. <laughs> 
So Dubsado will send them one document to kick this off, which basically is a checklist of extras that they can do when they actually launch the site, including the Google Search Console setup video, which I pull from Henry Purchase of SEO Space. He did an excellent video on that. I don't need to recreate it. I literally just send them the link to that YouTube video. It's all they really need to know, and it's short and sweet. I also have a checklist of other things they can do, like setting up their Google Analytics if they're not sure. I also point them to Henry's other video, which walks through that step by step, so I don't have to do that. And it also gives them a list of anything that we had discussed, such as setting up a freebie, linking it to the form and convert kit, writing their first blog post, creating some sort of social media thing, downloading their uh, a launch announcement graphics, whatever that needs to look like for each individual client. There's usually five or 10 that are the same for everybody, but there's usually an additional five or 10 that are unique to each person. So after I send that form in Dubsado, which is just a questionnaire with a bunch of links and a bunch of check boxes so they can check off literally their post-launch checklist, then Dubsado also sends them access to a couple of different areas. First of all, my support ticket form, which is on my website. They can access that at any time to submit a support ticket if they're actually having an issue. That support ticket does tell them that that time is billable. So they know if they need my help, I'm there, but I also may need to bill for that time, which is something that I don't want to have to say every time. So they have the access to the support ticket form. They have the access and the password to any new accounts that I've created for them in the process, such as the signature.email service that I use to create a branded email signature if I have done that for them, Canva templates, the private resources hub. Uh, if we've set up a new ConvertKit account or something like that, I give them all the logins that we created during the course of the project. Over the next 30 days, Dubsado periodically sends out an email reminder of, hey, don't forget your support period ends on this specific date. Let me know if you need any help before then. Here's that link to support ticket again and constant reminders about that. I think it sends two to four during the 30 days in addition to the first one saying, hey, your support period starts now. <laughs> Dubsado will also send them a final request for a review. So actually during the project, it sends a review request on the Thursday before we launch because that's when the client is the most excited about launching. So that's kind of like the pre-launch review. How have I done so far? Then in the support period, Dubsado will send a second review request that's like, hey, have you had any wins yet? Have you gotten your first client? Have you made your first sale? Have you gotten your first traffic bump? <laughs> it doesn't matter how big or small the win is, just let me know and share it with me. And then at the end of the support period, Dubsado sends a final email that says, it's been fun, but now it's over because actually un until recently, I've never drawn a hard line in the sand that says, hey, this is exactly when our project is over and now anything that happens after that is billable. Like you have to book another project with me or whatever. And so having this built into the support system is awesome because it is a fun way to say goodbye, tell them I've enjoyed the project, but now it's over and I'm moving on to the next thing. So that is a peek at my whole process from start to finish, from booking to the project itself and the 30-day support period that follows custom projects. Now, that's only the process that I have for custom projects or redesigns, migrations, those kinds of things, the larger two-week process. That does not really apply to VIP days. Those move too fast to do this system with. <laughs> I feel like that goes without saying, but I'm just going to say it anyway. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about how I do VIP days or design days, let me know in the comments below and I'll do that in a future video. If you want to learn more about my discovery call process or onboarding or inquiry forms or my onboarding processes in Dubsado or my client portal, go to my channel and look for those videos. I have one on all of those topics. So I will link two of those here that are probably, I would imagine, most popular. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> and make sure you check out those videos so that you can get an even deeper peek at my processes and how I work with custom clients. I hope this was really helpful for you to see kind of an inside peek at how I handle my two-week process. I hope that maybe you can adopt it too. It's given me a lot of freedom and control and it's made my projects go so much smoother. <laughs> and I just hope for that for you too. 
That's all for now. I will see you in the next video. Bye.